world famous men and women across the world. I hope you're doing great today. Uh, I'm actually about to walk into a training here. I got asked to come in and speak during a luncheon and uh, they wanted me to do something on setting goals and uh, I want to share it with you real quick. One of the things that I found, I've, I've been working with leaders uh, individually. I've come in and worked with teams all over and there's this common thread of uh, three things that I've noticed that hold people back, hold individuals back, they hold teams back from really achieving the things that they set out to accomplish and to achieve and that, that kind of trip them up in the goal setting and goal achieving. And uh, I want to share those with you real quick. Three things. The first thing that I notice is people set goals based on things they already know they can accomplish. Right, so this is 2020. You kind of look back at 2019 and say, based on 2019, I think I can accomplish this. And really, what we do is we fall into this um, <clears throat> this comparison trap where we compare ourselves to other people. We may see somebody that's a little further down the path than we are, and uh, you know, we say, well, I'm I'm not as good as that team. My team's not as good as them, or I'm not as good as that person. And we get a little frustrated and we throw our hands up and say, I'll take what I can get. Or we look at look kind of behind us at the person that we may be a little further down the road than and we'll say, well, you know, at, at least I'm not like that little short Corey Lee guy. At least I'm not like him, right? I know I'm doing a little bit better than him. And we get complacent and content. And I had a mentor tell me one time, he said, um, <clears throat> Corey, when you get to heaven, God isn't going to ask you why you weren't more like Mother Teresa. He's going to ask you, why weren't you more like you? Why weren't you more like the Corey Lee that I created and designed you to be, right? So we all have our own unique gifts, talents, and abilities that we bring to the table, that we bring to the marketplace, and the marketplace and the people around us need our gifts. So we don't compare ourselves to other people. We compare ourselves to our potential. But the the comparison trap that I see us uh, fall into that's even worse than that is we compare ourselves to our current situations and our current results, right? We'll, uh, we'll take a look down at where we currently are and we'll have this big idea, this big goal that flashes into our mind and we'll look at this big idea, this big goal, and we look down at our current results and we say they don't match. It'll say, oh, that's too big. <laughs> I ain't never done nothing like that before. That's just too big, right? But let me ask you, the, uh, the room that you're in, the room right now that you're in, is that room big or small? If I look at this car right here, I'm in an SUV. I'm in a GMC Acadia. Is a GMC Acadia big or small? Kind of depends, right? I mean, if I compare this GMC Acadia to a Prius, <laughs> this GMC Acadia is kind of big, right? But uh, I see a big school bus over there. If I, if I compare this GMC Acadia to that big school bus, it's kind of small, right? This car didn't change. The height, the width, the dimensions, none of that changed. The car stayed the same, but what I compared it to change, right? So this this GMC Acadia isn't big or small, it just is. And it's the same thing with our inspired ideas, not big or small, it just is. And when we compare it to our current results and we say it doesn't match, it's not going to match. Our current results are coming from our past performance and this inspired idea is coming from our future potential. So we don't compare ourselves to other people, we don't compare ourselves to our current results. We compare ourselves to our potential, and our potential is infinite. So first goal mistake is we set goals based on what we already know we can accomplish. Goal mistake number two is incorrect use of imagination. And I love imagination. I love imagination. I love ideas, right? We've got three kids, and if they hear the word idea, they'll pop up and say, ooh, daddy loves ideas. And I do, man. I love some ideas because what's the value of one really good idea? What's the value of one really good idea? You can't put a price tag on it. Everything you see first started as an idea in somebody's mind. This GMC Acadia that I'm sitting in first started as an idea in somebody's mind. This phone that I'm recording this on started as an idea in somebody's mind. 
I can look outside and I can see the grass and the trees and the birds and the butterflies and the bees. And they all started as an idea in the mind of God. So I love ideas. What's the value of one really good idea? Uh, about three years ago, I was <clears throat> I was uh, out at a physical therapy conference. And I was flying back and I had this idea just, boop, you know, pop into my mind. And I did the whole, oh, that's too big. I can't do that. I've never done anything like that before. That's just too big, right? <clears throat> but this idea just kind of kept coming back to me. Kind of com- kept coming back, coming back, coming back. And um, I started playing with the idea and I said, hey, you know, can I do that? Can can I do that? Is that possible for me? And then finally, I put a how in front of me, can I? How can I? See, how can I triggers the creative use of our imagination. And I'm, I'm about to go in and speak to this, this group. This is a healthcare group, and I'm, you know, my past is in healthcare. And one thing I know about healthcare and pretty much every industry is it's constantly changing. It's constantly changing. With change, there often is some challenges, right? But one thing I know about challenges is within every challenge also lies an opportunity. But we tend to focus on the challenge over the opportunity. So right now, I I want you to do this for me. I want you to do this. I want you to, wherever you're at, I want you to look around for the next 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I want you to look around and find everything you can that's the color blue everything you can that's the color blue and i want you to take a mental note of everything that's blue so blue 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 look around look to the side look up look down look behind you everywhere you look trying to find the color blue everything you see that's the color blue 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 all right now what i want you to do I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to get the image of everything that's blue. Everything that you can recall that's blue. And with your eyes closed, I want you to tell me or say out loud everything you saw that was brown. (laughs) Kind of hard to do, right? See, where our focus goes, that's where our energy flows to. If we focus on challenges... We're going to see more and more challenges. If we focus on finding the solution, eventually we're going to find a solution, right? So goal mistake number two is incorrect use of imagination. The last one, goal mistake number three, is we do not persist without exception. We do not persist without exception. Uh, In the book Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, he says, lack of persistence is a weakness common to the majority of people and that most people, most people, they get going and at the very first sign of opposition, throw their hands up and say, I can't do it. And they quit, right? But there are a few that carry on despite all opposition. So yeah, kind of give you an example of this. So say, say you've got a goal to earn a hundred thousand dollars this year. I don't know for you if that's big or small, right? It, it doesn't matter. This is just a number, right? So say your goal is $100,000 this year in income. And you get to June or July, halfway through the year, and you're only at like 15000 right? You're not even close to halfway to where you're supposed to be at. What most people do is they get to June or July and say, man, I'm not even close to halfway. And they take the goal and they shrink the goal down to match the plan that they're on. And what I'm going to suggest to you is if if this is truly your goal, if this is truly what you are after, then you don't shrink the goal to match the plan. You change the plan to match the goal, right? If the plan that you are on isn't working, then you take the plan and chunk it out the window. Find you a new plan. If that plan doesn't work, you take that plan and you chunk it right out the window. You persist without exception in defining a plan that will take you to the goal. Persist without exception. And I'll tell you this, if you ever doubt, if you ever doubt your ability to bring your big idea, that inspired idea forward, or your team's big idea, or big goal forward, what I want you to do is I want you to go outside at night and I want you to look up at the moon 
And I want you to remember, there are footprints on the moon. There are footprints on the moon, right? I had a mentor tell me that, and, and I think that's so powerful, that imagery. I saw this the other day. I saw that they are now 3D printing hearts, right? With the aorta, the valve, and everything, they are 3D printing hearts for heart transplants. I mean, that's amazing. And it, it, so if you ever doubt your ability to bring your idea forward, think about that. Now, I don't know about you and what you and your team have going on, but what I know about me is my the things I'm pursuing aren't near as difficult as trying to figure out how to put a man on the moon, right? So persist without exception. I want to end this video with a challenge for you, okay? I want you to think about your goal. Think about what it is that you want to accomplish in 2020. Think about that. Get that in your mind. And for the next 30 seconds, I want you to write down everything that comes to your mind that you could do within the next 24 hours that it, you know if you did this, if you took action on this, it would take you closer to where you wanted to be. So for the next 30 seconds, just write down everything that comes to your mind. Do not filter, just write it down. If you did this, you know it would take you closer to where you wanted to be. Once you get those down, I want to challenge you. I've got a challenge for you. For the next 10 days in a row, for the next 10 days in a row, I want you to do at least one of those things, one of those tasks that you wrote down for the next 10 days in a row. If you miss a day, hey, you get the opportunity to start all the way back over. If you get to day seven or eight, and you miss day seven or eight, all the way back to day number one. And there's a twofold purpose to this. One is obvious, you know, you just said that this is my goal. If I do these action steps, <clears throat> I know this is gonna take me closer to my goal. So you're gonna get a little closer to your goal. But, but the real purpose behind it is you are gonna find what's been holding you back this entire time. You're gonna hear the excuses that you tell yourself and they're gonna they're gonna sound like legitimate excuses. And these are the excuses that are holding you back in every single area of your life. What's worse than a good excuse uh, what's worse than an excuse is it a good excuse. See I, I did this and I get to about day seven or eight and I'd wake up and say, I, you know I've really got this other thing that's really important for me to do. I'm gonna do it first and then I'll do what I was committed to do. And by the time I know it, it's in the afternoon, the kids are home. It's like, well, you know, I, I got to play with the kids. I got to spend some time with the kids. And then, you know, once they go to bed, then I'll do this thing that I was committed to do. And then it comes bedtime. And, you know, I mean, I really do my best work in the morning. I'm a morning person. I just wait till in the morning and I'll do it then. And I miss the day. I didn't uphold my own commitment to myself. So we judge ourselves based on our intentions. We judge other people based on their actions. And you're gonna see how easily you let yourself off the hook. Now, all those were real, legitimate excuses. But that's not what I'm saying, is I want you to dig in and find what is it, why? Why didn't you do what you said you were gonna do? Why didn't you do what you said you were committed to doing? And in this, you know, hey, it's a you and you deal, right? It, and nobody's gonna be over your shoulder checking to see if you did it or not. Uh, now, if you would like a coach that would help you with that accountability aspect, hey, that's what I do, right? I would be happy to help you do that and I love doing that, but, but it's a you and you deal, right? So if you miss a day, I want you to be gentle on yourself and I want you to dig out the learning right? It's all about learning and the awareness that comes from that. So those are the top three mistakes I've seen in goal uh, setting and goal achieving. One more time, we set goals based on what we already know we can accomplish, number one. Number two, incorrect use of our imagination. Every single one of us have an imagination. Every single one of us use our imagination. We can use our imagination to think of worst case scenarios or think of all the reasons why something won't work, or we can use that imagination to create plans and solve solutions and find solutions. Number three is lack of persistence. We do not persist without exception. 
I hope this has added value to you. If this has, has added value to you, all I ask is that you, you hit the thumbs up at the bottom, you, you reply with a thumbs up, and share it with somebody. Share it with somebody you know that may make an impact on them and their lives. I hope you guys have a great day, and God bless. Go out and be world famous.